Hello, this is the camp before Gaines's Mill, and this is the schedule that your troops come in. Now what I recommend doing is only build active units to fight down to the 16-14 uh, hours time. And the reason is that 1800 is way too late. Uh, this battle's over at 1930. So, I mean, 1st Corps, 4th Division, maybe, but that's, that's about it. I mean, the battle's going to be over at 1830. There just aren't that many enemy units to kill, and these guys come in way too late. So I would say stack all of your troops into everything up to 1640, and then everything after that is ballast. Um, you have to build all four divisions of First Corps, all four divisions of Third Corps. Um, so you have to build ballast in there, but you only build two divisions of Second Corps. So, um, yeah, so I recommend instead of what I'm about to do and what you're about to see, First Corps, Fourth Division, Second Corps, Second Division at 1800, make those ballast. 1808, uh, third Corps, Third Division, come in on the right side, make those ballast as well. Either skirmisher units or four gun artillery units or something like that. And then pour all your remaining men into everything that comes in before 1614. And those units are here. So, total number of units you want to bring. Now, I had a little bit of a problem because I had a lot of men. Um, but, you know you can build oversized units, so not a problem. Change to ballast uh, from what I'm about to do. First Corps, Fourth Division, Second Corps, Second Division, Third Corps, Third Division. But otherwise, what I'm about to do is pretty okay. Um, now, I had an idea of bringing these guys in late, um, and um, I, I intended for them to finish the battle, to get into the battle, to get into melee, uh, and it almost worked, except if you take the victory locations, and I took the victory locations, a timer goes down, and when all three victory locations, when their timer goes down, the battle's over. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the... I brought in 10 units that I didn't need to bring in that really didn't do anything interesting. So I go ahead, it's time to go ahead and build a sniper unit. And I break down my best unit and now I'm going to build a sniper. And I have 411 guns so I'm going to go ahead and build 411 and let this guy bleed down a little bit. And I might... Um, break him into two units at, uh, for Malvern Hill. Not really sure. So I'm torn. I'm showing you what the three perks are. I'm kind of torn on what perk to take. I think probably the speed perk is the best one, but I think I take the other. No, I go ahead and take the speed perk. And for this battle, I don't think I go with recon. I intend on reforming these units every battle, so um, I can choose different perks depending on the battle. I think mostly I'm going to go with stealth and spotting, but I think, um, yeah, and I'm going to move generals around later. Uh, this guy's probably going to get a general. So this guy does not have pretty pretty big distance, even with the general, to getting his third star. So has to get a lot of kills. Uh, I go ahead and pour my best unit into this guy. I hadn't intended to take him back to 750, but eh, why not? So Albert Johnson. I'm going to end up moving him. Uh, second core is going to become first core. First core is going to become reserve. Um, and I'm just going to use first, currently first, third, second, third, and fourth are going to become my um, core active cores that I'm going to use. Um, yeah, it, it's just, it, it became too complicated with uh, six divisions in first division of first core. So, yeah, if, if you get firearms course, you're going to fire faster and build up uh, your firearms, but you're going to get fewer kills, so you won't grind up efficiency as fast. So... 
Yeah, I'm gonna just go with melee. So now I had a big decision here. How big do I want to make these units? And I don't make them big enough. I think I end up making these guys 1600. I think that's what I end up going with for this guy. That's a nice efficiency on this unit. Um, and he's not that far from his third star. So I'm also going to create some um, some artillery. Because I have 22 guns, and I'm going to create two units, that's 11 for each one. I'm, I thought about buying some guns, but I'm not going to buy... Um, I'm not going to buy parrots. I mean, the game's going to give me a bunch of them. I'm just going to... Um, I'm just going to use what I get for free. So yeah, there's no reason to invest in ammo right now. And... Yeah, I'm going to go for... Yeah, I really should go for gunnery training. Uh, just fire faster. But I don't want to fire slower because I'd like to build up the firearm skill. So, yeah, we have a ways to go, I think, to the third third star for these artillery units. And 10-pounders don't get there real fast. Yeah, we have a ways to go. And these units don't get a lot of kills. So anyway, my ideal gun size is going to be 14. Because that's the max effective size before you get hit with a debuff. I'm going to have to look at the debuff curve. Because if I could go to 15 or 16 and not take too heavy a penalty, I think I would do it. Uh, yeah, I do the same thing here. So we're going to create some some artillery units. I didn't create all my artillery units out of my uh, best infantry because that was just too many infantry to take out. What I think I'll do is I'll I'll build like one specialty unit out of my best infantry per battle. That way I can pour more men into that my best unit, um, which right now is Harper's Ferry one. So. Yeah, I think I end up reforming this guy. Uh, I think I end up reforming my sniper. I end up changing. I end up changing my mind. Yeah, I end up forming this guy right away. Because I build too many units, too many active units to fight, I have to, um, I'm, I'm, I do this off camera, but I take all of my raw recruits that I have in the manpower pool, and um, like I have, I think it's 44,000 men in this army. I'm just fiddling with my best units, but I have a whole bunch of guys that I've already built uh, to empty out the manpower pool. So, yeah, I pour all these guys into units to make them larger. Uh, but as you can see, my units are, in some cases, 23, almost 2,400. I have to make them smaller. So this is the process of making units smaller. Pouring units into other units, creating a unit of 500, and then pouring men into the 500 to get it up to 1,600 or 1,500, whatever you're trying to do. And I always like my best units to be a little larger, my units that come in first to be larger than the units that come in later. So yeah, this is... And then keeping track of how many men you have and how many units you're going to build of each different type. And I have a lot of... I end up having, I think, seven specialty units. So a sniper, some artillery, my oversized cav unit. Uh, but there's no penalty for melee. 
Um, so my CAV unit can be 750 and there's no melee penalty. As long as that unit's in melee, there's no debuff. So, um, yeah, that's basically what I'm doing. And then, like, this howitzer is a pretty valuable gun. So I give him the cover perk, but my 6-pounders and my 12-Hs are going to get the rapid fire perk because they just need to hit, they just need to throw out canister and they also need to attract uh, enemy artillery fire if the enemy artillery of his long range guns are targeting, targeting my artillery as they do in this mod, I want him to hit my 6 pounders. So by giving my 24 pound howitzer the cover perk and having them stay back just a little bit from the front line and having the 6 pounders and the 12 H's on the front line and also having them at 14 guns, one, they'll attract attention, which I want them to do, and attract attention away from the uh, 24 H's. Yeah, it's all good. Um, they can take some losses and I don't care. So, yeah, 14 guns each for the 6 pounders and the 12 howitzers. And if I get Napoleons, that'll be fine too. I'm not going to buy any of those guns. I'm just going to use stuff that I capture. So, let's see. I am going to buy 24 howitzers and 20 parrots. So, in, in the units that I... Um, I did not take men out of my best unit, my Harper's Ferry 1, but I'm taking them out of like my third best infantry. So rather than taking men out of my best infantry and create these... Well, you, you don't really have to do that for your 24-pound howitzers. I just wanted to have two stars. Anything that has two stars is fine. 24-pound howitzer is going to get a lot of XP. Um, and there's no reason for the 6-pounder or the 12-H to have more than two stars anyway. Yes, sir. As soon as that guy does, as soon as those units do, like say it gets to a third star, I'd move them up to um, a parrot. Or, yeah, I'd move them up to a parrot. Three-star units go to long-range guns. Uh, disband them, re-park them out for long-range fire. And, you know, and, and launch a brand new, fresh, as low as possible two-star artillery unit to get back up on the front line and take losses. There's no reason for a third-star unit, in my opinion, to be on the front line taking losses. So, yeah, this actually works out. These numbers work out pretty well. Building a bunch of 1,600 and 1,500 size units, they perform very well. But in hindsight, I would have brought in uh, fewer units. So you're going to see that I'm going to create a bunch of units that are 1,000 in size that aren't going to get into the battle. Um, I'd have been better off putting ballast units in, in those divisions and then making all of my units larger. Not because I needed units to be larger in this battle. I mean, it's fine. Um, these units do, I mean, it, this is such an easy battle. I mean, the, the end, there's not that, that many. Um, the enemy doesn't have that many men on the field. You can, you, you can steamroll this thing. They're going to die pretty quickly. Um, just get into combat and kill them. It, and it, the whole exercise is, I mean, any battle where you're, you have them at one-to-one -one is just an easy battle. And I think we actually, do we have a numerical advantage here? Yeah, we actually outnumber the enemy. I mean, that's just, well, we outnumber them, but I think something like 10,000. I, th I think actively engaged, it's, it's about even because I have like 10,000 that doesn't make it to the battle. It, it, they come onto the battlefield, but they don't fight. But I, I consider any, um, any battle where the odds are 
better than two to one in the enemy's favor is an easy battle. And this is one to one. So any battles that are one to one are just ridiculous. So again, I created a small unit of about 700 and then disbanded the next level unit. These are in like order of efficiency and then poured it into the 700 until it got up to 1500. And yeah, those two units are about the same. And look at that melee. Yeah, I'm looking at the melee. Look at the efficiency, morale, stamina. Firearms and efficiency are a little low. These guys need to get in there and get more kills. Yeah, and in hindsight, I, I would have made all of all of these units probably closer to 1,800 because they're going to be on the battlefield. The first three divisions are on the battlefield the longest. First core, first three divisions. And um, yeah, so that's what I would have done. I would have probably made them uh, 16, maybe 18, maybe 1,800. And yeah, I would have made them 1,800. 1,850 is about the... Um, max effective size before a debuff of any kind and if you detach skirmishers that counts so so I guess the you could build units of 2100 detached skirmishers and you'd be right at probably right at about the max effective size and, um, yeah, I kind of like 2,200 as the number. But uh, in this battle, I don't have enough men to do that. So probably I would make these guys, if I had to do it again, I'm just guessing. 1,800, first three cores of, uh, first three divisions of first core would probably be about 1,800. And that that would have been, that would have been great. They would have, I would have been able to bring a few hundred uh, more men in and get experience. Yeah, what I'm doing here is I have 1994. That's too big. So I just want to create a unit of 500. And then create the 1494. 1494. Anyway, I'm going to go back and create, make this 1494, and then disband the next unit in line and pour the, you know, a couple men into it to bring it up to, you know, like six guys, to bring it up to 1500, and then the guy that's 500, pour men into that to bring it up to 1500. So... Here I've moved things around a little bit. Finally got it right. Move him up to 1,500. Lorenz won. And then, you know, this is what you do to make units smaller. So I'm thinking, do I want to make these units 1,400 or 1,500? I go with 1,500. Sir, yes, sir! Yeah, you know, all these guys are getting morale and uh, melee, and that works. And my thinking is, um, I thought that I might give these guys the rapid fire perk, and the, the reason I was thinking of rapid fire is to grind up firearms efficiency. Um, but if you invest in the, um, the greater accuracy, but fire slower perk, what you do is you, you kill more and you grind up your efficiency. And firearms will not, you know, go up anywhere near as fast. The melee perk is like a balance between the two. So there's a, I, there's a lot of maneuver in this battle and also a lot of um, firing before you finally encircle them. The extra condition is not that important because 
for the units, I mean, if you take a look at the stamina, my units don't need some extra points of stamina. Green units need that extra stamina, and they benefit from that. But my units don't need that. What I need is efficiency. Efficiency is more important than stamina because my units have a ton of stamina. Um, yeah, I'm looking at that 73. Do I really need that additional stamina? Or do I need efficiency? Not sure. That's a lot of stamina. Yeah, I should have made these guys. Do I make him fourteen hundred? I should have made. I should have made all these guys eighteen hundred. Yeah, and I was saying one of the things I do is, um, at some point, I just go and generate a ton of um, officers of units, and the reason is to be able to buy. Well, I, I don't know how many um, officers I buy, but I buy a bunch of officers. And the lowest ranking major, I think, is about $700. And I buy a ton of, um, ju just a bunch of them. And um, the reason is so that I can put majors in and free up lieutenant colonels. Um, I pretty much ran out of officers doing this, and I needed to buy a bunch of low-level officers to be able to build all of the ballast units that I wanted to. Um, yeah, so I just went out and just made a bunch of them. And I have the money. I mean, one of the things is that I have more money than I can really, than I need to spend for this battle. And I think I end up filling out yeah, all four cores. And here I've renamed my cores and reorganized them. The reason is I want to save... It's too. It became really too complex to figure out what cores and di what divisions came in when. Um, because what happens is if you have six units in first division, it screws up everything and you don't know who's actually going to show up. This way I know who's going to show up where. There's no question. So I end up put six ballast units, which is a waste of 600 green troops, and, yeah, um, and I end up renaming 1st, 2nd, and 3rd Corps. I have a reserve corps in, in the, um, that's at the top, and my corps commanders are uh, Albert Sidney Johnson, General Something Compass, and Thomas Jackson. In reality, I should have probably put those guys in infantry units to grind, my two-star generals, in, um, uh, two-star in, in infantry units to grind XP. I did buy the Lamots, and um, my unit that I'm spending all this time building, my cav unit, is going to get Lamots. I think after Malvern Hill, you get a chance to buy 500 Lamots, and I'll have... Um, I'll probably keep that unit about 600, 650... And I'll have, with the, with the Lamots that I've bought so far, and here are the officers in the officer corps. I have a ton of officers. I have uh, one lieutenant general, six major generals, um, 16 brigadier generals, 22 colonels, um, 10, I only have 10 lieutenant colonels and 26 majors. And I'm going to buy more after this battle. So from what I just did here, I would change what I did here, make these where I made these infantry units and artillery make these ballast. Um, as you're going to see, it's a waste of time. There's, they don't really get into the battle. Maybe, maybe fourth division of first corps infantry, but certainly second corps, second division, third corps, third division. Complete waste of time. Well, yeah, just a complete waste of time. Um, they should be ballast, no doubt, but probably. First Corps, Fourth Division also should be ballast. Anyway, um, you can um, take a look at my army in its final form, and then decide how many men you have and what kind of army you want to build to the bring to the battle.
and uh, good luck. Good luck with your battle. Um, thanks for watching, and I'll see you at Gaines's Mill.